Good evening, everyone, or good afternoon, I guess, if you're uh, watching some somewhere else other than Laura and myself. Um, and welcome to tonight's Lovely Skin Masterclass series featuring ISDEN. Um, we have Laura Verdugo with us from ISDEN this evening, who will be talking about hyperpigmentation and discoloration and solutions that the ISDEN brand can offer to help with those. Um, before we get started tonight, I have just a couple of housekeeping tasks that I need to address. First of all, this session is being recorded, so please be aware of that. And the recording will be made available sometime by early next week. We will make that available to the public and to you to re-watch if needed. Um, we do have moderators standing by behind the scenes to answer any questions that you have. We have moderators from the Lovely Skin side and the ISDEN side. And we just ask that you use the Q&A widget within uh, the Zoom platform to ask those questions. That'll just help the moderators um, keep better track of what's been answered and what needs answered so we can address everybody's questions this evening. I'd now like to introduce you to Laura Verdugo, uh, the Consumer to Marketing Manager for ISDEN. Laura is an international branding professional with over 10 years of experience. With a passion for beauty and a deep understanding of the skincare industry, she uses her expertise to connect more people with ISDEN. Some people ask, what's your favorite formula, Laura? And she says the Melatonic Night Serum. Uh, you guys are in for a treat. I've actually sat in a few trainings with Laura, and she's very well versed on ISDIN and discoloration and hyperpigmentation. Laura, take it away. Thank you so much, Chrissy. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today. I'm super happy to be here. Um, as with all things tech, let's just do a quick check to make sure that everything's working as it should. So I'm going to present my screen and then Chrissy, if you could just give me confirmation that that is being shown properly. The intro slide looks great. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, thank you. Uh, so again, hi everyone, uh, good evening, good morning. I am super happy to be here on behalf of ISDEN for this masterclass on discoloration and hyperpigmentation. Um, for some of you, ISDIN may be some, somewhat of a newer brand. Uh, we actually have a very rich global heritage of over 47 years, but we've only been in the US for about six. So some of you may know us, some of you may not. Um, and I just wanted to give you just a really short intro on, on you know, who we are at ISDIN and, and a little bit of our company past. So um, if anybody recognizes this image, it's the gorgeous aerial view of uh, the Barcelona beach. So ISDEN is a Spanish company and we are based, you know, on the forefront of the Mediterranean. Um, and we were born from the union of two Spanish companies. So the Esteve Pharma Company and the Pooch Fragrance Empire. So you might recognize that second company more than the first because it's, um, you know, it, it has fragrances and all of the travel retail and it's a very, very well-known um, company. And so these two these two companies came together because um, the people that were at the head of these companies went on a sailing trip and they said, what if we could unite forces and create something new? And together they infused both science and beauty into ISDEN. And then over the years, they, creating, they created an anti-photoaging portfolio of products. And it was always striking that balance between, you know, science and beauty, great textures, but also efficacy that is demonstrated clinically, endorsed by dermatologists, and always trying to strike the balance with this duality. And so at ISDEN, our mission is to help uh, people enjoy healthy, happy, beautiful lives through healthy and beautiful skin. And, you know, we believe that meaningful innovation is really key to achieving healthy skin. You know, um, we also want to make sure that it's not just this dual focus on the innovation of science and beauty, but that everything that we do as a brand maintains the highest standards of social environmental um, accountability and transparency. So actually, we're super happy that ISDEN um, has, B, has been B Corps certified for the past two years. Um, and for those of you that are familiar with B Corps, that's not something that you're granted once and, you know, you can kind of relax. It's, it's really something you need to uphold 
and you need to maintain and you're constantly being recertified. So we're super proud to have been the first Spanish Derma Cosmetic Lab to be B Corps certified. Um, and I think that that's something that will mean a lot to many of you. So just wanted to give you guys that um, very quick intro on, on ISDEN. But we're all here to talk about discoloration and hyperpigmentation with ISDEN. Um, just a little recap of what we're covered today. You know, what is hyperpigmentation and what causes it? What are the main types of um, hyperpigmentation and discoloration? Main tips for prevention with everything in skincare, if, you know, prevention is key. So um, we're also going to talk about skin tone correcting ingredients, but I do want to put a focus on protect on prevention uh, specifically because ISDEN is a, you know, is a brand leader in many markets worldwide in photo protection. And so for us, that's just at the core of everything we do. So I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this during the presentation. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, hyperpigmentation and the pathways of action and how these skin tone correcting ingredients are going to affect those different pathways in order to give us the result that we want. And then, of course, I'd love to present to you ISTIN's solution to correct hyperpigmentation, which is called MeliClear Advanced. Um, it's a wonderful product. It launched about a year ago in the U.S., um, and it very quickly became our best ever launch. So super excited to cover that uh, with all of you. So I think we're going to start with a little poll, right, Chrissy? We are. Our moderators behind the scene will pop it up onto the screen and we'll be able to all interact with it here. Never have I ever. Have you ever struggled with uneven skin tone or spots? Qu uh, answer one, yes or no, not that I can recall. Sometimes I like to vote as well. And then we'll get everyone's answers here in just a minute. One hundred percent of the <laughs> of the survey participants said yes. So you're in the right. Thank spot. you for that. Thank you for that statistic. So I think. <laughs> I think everybody here um, is here for a very clear reason. You know, what is happening to my skin and what can I do to improve the appearance of my skin? Um, so as I said, I this is a little teaser video of our MeliClear Advance, but we'll get to that later on uh, in the presentation. So what is hyperpigmentation and what causes it? So hyperpigmentation refers to any darkening of the skin, and this can happen uh, due to internal and also external factors, okay? So just a little bit about kind of skin, skin color, and um, the general kind of mechanism. So on the right, you have kind of like a cross-section of um, the layers of human skin. And as many of you will know, there's kind of like three big layers of the epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis. And then there's a lot of sub-layers within that, right? So our skin color is determined by the amount of melanin that we have in our um, in our melanocytes. So um, the melanin is the pigment, the melanocytes are cells, and the keratinocytes are cells, okay? Uh, oftentimes people think that the reason why skin is darker is because it has more melanocytes. That's actually not true. What determines the um, Fitzpatrick type that you're born with is the melanin. Um, it's actually the melanocyte activity that is what determines the amount of melanin in the skin. And so melanocytes are present in the basal layer or the stratum basal, um, and the keratinocytes are present in all five layers of the epidermis. So this melanin, when it's found in abundance, you're gonna see a darker skin tone, so a higher Fitzpatrick. And when it's present in lower quantities, you have the resulting lower tones. Now, just because you're born with a specific um, skin tone doesn't mean that that skin tone can't change um, momentarily or throughout your life. So what we see is that when individuals are exposed to sunlight, we can, we can have that production of melanin be stimulated by the sunlight, and that's what gives rise to a suntan. Now, for some people, that may be very good news. For other people, that may be not so good news, okay? But what we see is that with some of the lighter skin tones, that exposure to sunlight results in a very evident suntan. So I just wanted to explain a little bit 
how this works. I promise this is probably this is probably going to be the most um, in depth, let's say, science slide. I have this one and one more other, but I think it's important that we kind of understand how all of this comes together, so that then when we're discussing the different types of hyperpigmentation or we're discussing um, the ingredients that help correct it. I think having this as a common understanding could be a good base to start. So first we have kind of the UV light, right? And we have to see this um, keratinocyte. This is a cell, right, with its nucleus. And this melanocyte is another cell, right? And when the UV light penetrates the keratinocyte, it can damage the DNA that's present in the nucleus, okay? Um, and this DNA damage can cause mutation, can, can, um, the, the UV radiation can cause mutations along the DNA chain. That's what's represented there by kind of that breakage in the DNA chain. And what happens is that when the cell replicates, it's replicating with the mutation. And so the issue with that is that you have faulty, faulty damaged cells that are replicating. And that can leave rise that that can give rise to many complications, um, but it, it could eventually even um, reach melanoma, right? So you could have this damage be replicated, um, and there's a lot of things. For example, that in this presentation, I want to bring to your attention: this DNA damage, uh, the ISDN sunscreens, they're designed to help repair these CPD lesions that occur from UV light. So we'll talk about the sunscreens a little bit later. But even after this damage is done, there are things that you can do with cosmeceutical products that can help uh, revert kind of this pigmentation that's originated uh, from when the DNA damage happens. So just kind of think that um, even though this process happens the same way, there's ways you can address it at the kind of protection stage, but also at the correction stage. So kind of going back to the mechanism, the UV light hits um, the cell if the UV light penetrates to and it reaches the DNA, it can generate um, that DNA damage. What that cell does in turn is it creates a protein called P53. And I'm not going to go through all of this terminology, but basically this protein signals to the melanocyte that it needs to produce melanin. Okay. And the melanin are these little black dots that we see here, the melanosomes. And actually, these cells have these kinds of like arms, these dendrites that are able to momentarily attach to the keratinocyte and transfer the melanin. OK, so again, the UV light goes, hits the DNA, the cell reacts, creates a protein that triggers the melanocyte to produce pigment, to produce this melanin. And then it's the melanosomes that transfer it to the keratinocyte. Once these little pigments arrive in the keratinocyte, they kind of huddle around the nucleus of the cell to protect it, okay? And so what happens is that the next time that the UV light reaches the cell, it doesn't hit the DNA, it bounces off, or, or let's say the melanin absorbs the UV light and then dissipates the rest of the energy as heat, okay? So it's kind of like these little pigments create a protective barrier around the nucleus. Now, how does that materialize externally, right? Because here we're talking at a cellular level. What you see on the outside is that due to this increased amount of melanin that's in these keratinocytes, which again are present along all five layers of the epidermis, you see a darkening of the skin tone. Now, when this happens homogeneously, you could call that your summer glow, when this happens in specific spots, that's when you start to get your signs of hyperpigmentation. You start to get your sunspots and, and, and all of the things that we're going to cover now, right? But I just want to make sure that the mechanic is clear. Um, and again, these keratinocytes and these melanocytes, um, they work together to protect the DNA of the cell because in the end, that's the most important thing, right? Making sure that there's no DNA, DNA damage that's being replicated. So if we go into the different types of hyperpigmentation, um, there's like five main ones um, that we've categorized. So you've got on the one hand, melasma, you've got sunspots, you have freckles, you have post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, and then um, some spots that can originate due to certain drugs or medicines, right? Um, the first three are UV related. Um, which means that, you know, they can also wor worsen with exposure to UV. The post-inflammatory 
uh, hyperpigmentation is not UV related. I'll cover why now. And neither is the um, drug related one. So if we go a little bit deeper um, into each of them, um, I'm actually one second. So let me just cover the um, what I was going to say about the post inflammatory. So melasma, sunspots and freckles, they worsen with UV exposure. Post inflammatory doesn't and actually usually resolves with time. And then um, the spots due to drugs and cosmetics, those are not, um, they're, they're not UV related either. So I want to go into the melasma, um, the sunspots and the post inflammatory hyperpigmentation is like the three main um, deep dives. And we're going to go into a little bit of detail um, on these on what they are and how you can help revert that kind of um, pigmentation. So if we start with melasma, um, melasma, or actually called cloasma in pregnancy, is a pigmentation of in the dermis, which is actually one of the hardest things to treat. Um, and if you're not careful and you're exposed to the sun, it's very quick to reappear. Um, so I, I'm probably sure there's there's a few women on the call that have experienced this in pregnancy. Um, if you take care of yourself and you protect yourself, it, it can disappear. Um, and for, you know, what we see is that melasma disproportionately affects higher phototypes. So phototypes four through six. Um, again, it appears in sun exposed areas. So it's very common to see melasma here on the cheek. A lot of people get it on the forehead, kind of the, the mustache effect, right? Um, this one's very common as well in pregnancy. And again, it's, um, it's also very frequent. Um, it's more frequent in females because it's related to hormones um, and it's very occasionally seen in males. Um, good news, there are ways to treat it. So you could have a multimodal approach, you could have um, anti-inflammatory medicines, you could have lasers, peels, uh, depigmenting products and, and brightening products, right? So you can really do a, a multimodal approach. You could have treatments in office, in office procedures with your dermatologist, and then you could also complement with um, your cosmetic products. Okay. So that's melasma. Again, kind of affects um, higher Fitzpatrick types, disproportionately affects women due to the hormones and is exacerbated through um, UV exposure. When we go to sunspots, so these are slightly different. These are caused by UV ray exposure. Okay. And this creates a proliferation of melanocytes. So if you remember what we were saying earlier, it's not so much um, the number of melanocytes, but it's kind of like the activity that these melanocytes have. Um, and this is really a cumulative effect. So uh, I think, you know, <laughs> it's always um, the retrospective knowledge that we gain as, as, as uh, individuals and as people involved in the skincare category. It's kind of like if I could say something to my younger self, I would say, hey, great that you're going to the Dominican Republic on holiday. How about you put on sunscreen and actually reapply it? So I was always very good at putting on sunscreen in the morning, but eight hours later, I had it reapplied once. So, you know, good luck getting protected in the Caribbean sun. And I think that that hindsight um, is, is very important because sunspots are actually cumulative, right? So you don't see it when you're 20. You don't see it when you're 25. You might start to see it when you're 30, 35, 40. And these really depend on the amount of radiation that you get throughout life. So if you've been completely reckless, I think you're in for a treat <laughs> when you when you um, age a little bit more. And I think it also has a lot to do with the awareness around um, skin cancer and the damaging effects of the sun. I think, uh, you know, people in general are much more conscientious nowadays, um, but it didn't used to be the case um, in previous generations. So hopefully with the amount of education that uh, is going around now, thanks to dermatologists and thanks to partners like um, Lovely Skin or ISDIN, you know, we're all trying to create an awareness around the damaging effects of the sun, which go beyond kind of photo aging or aesthetic related damage. It's really about protecting your skin from skin cancer. Um, so, you know, sunspots, it's a result of years of being exposed to radiation. But in the end, we're treating this topic through hyperpigmentation. But again, public service announcement, just want to remind everyone that it's really important to protect your skin beyond, you know, aesthetic reasons. It's important to um, protect your skin so that you don't develop um, skin cancer. 
So sunspots are found uh, specifically, or let's say with higher predominance in Caucasians. Um, and again, they usually are seen more over the age of 60, but that just has to do with that kind of cumulative effect. Um, and they normally have a clearly defined um, border. They're ovalish and they're kind of um, brown, uh, dark brown in color. Um, and they've been shown to be an independent risk factor for the development of cutaneous melanoma. So again, when we see these signs, um, it means that the skin has suffered damage throughout the years um, and we can correct it. But again, prevention is always the most important. So again, as with the melasma, you could also have a multimodal approach. Um, here, there's also microderm abrasion. You could, um, you could do, um, uh, cryo. There's, there's a lot of different, um, ways to treat it. And always, as always, visit your dermatologist. If you're lucky enough to be in the Omaha area, I am sure your dermatologist is Dr. Sh Joel Schlesinger. So <laughs> I hope you go to him and his team to, um, help you treat this. In terms of the post inflammatory, um, hyperpigmentation, which, as I said, is not related to UV radiation, this post inflammatory refers to what happens to the skin, the darkening of the skin after there's inflammation. So this is all about the body's response and the skin's response to things like acne or burns, or even if you're getting like an aggressive uh, clinical treatment or laser or an IPL, your skin reacts, right? And this reaction can trigger that darkening of the skin. Um, and it also is very um, related to the individual, right? Some people can go through microdermabrasion and not experience this, and other people might see more severe post-inflammatory um, hyperpigmentation. The good news is that because it's not UV radiation related, so it's not the UV radiation that's triggered that production of melanin, but it's been this um, temporary aggression on the skin, it usually resolves with time and does respond very well to hyperpigmentation treatments. Okay, so those are kind of the three key types of hyperpigmentation that I wanted to go into. Um, again, melasma, sunspots, and post-inflammatory. Um, and I do want to talk now about protection. I hinted upon it a little bit at the beginning. Um, but in the words of Dr. Schlesinger, since most skin discoloration is caused by unprotected sun exposure, an ounce of prevention is truly worth a pound of cure. Okay. So the number one thing that I would say on behalf of Isdom, the number one thing that I'm sure, um, lovely skin tells you as well is wear sunscreen daily. Um, the American Academy of Dermatology recommends an SPF of 30 or more on a daily basis. Um, and that will help you to prevent hyperpigmentation from occurring in the first place. Now, kind of key tips for prevention, you may have seen these before. So you want to apply your SPF daily. And you want to reapply it every two hours. Don't do like I did in the Caribbean. One and done doesn't work for sunscreen. If possible, try to avoid direct sunlight. Um, try to avoid the peak hours of 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And if you are going to be outside, try to seek some shade. You can use a hat as well. Um, and you can also incorporate vitamin C into your routine as an antioxidant. It's also going to help your skin um, try to fight this pigmentation. Um, limit touching your skin. Again, this goes back to the post-inflammatory um, pigmentation. And make sure you wash your hands before applying your skincare or makeup. Um, you know, if your hands are clean, uh, that's just going to make sure that your routine is much more gentle on your skin. And again, I wanted to put the picture on the right because, you know, we're talking about protecting ourselves, but also life is about enjoyment. And if you've got the right products by your side, there's no reason you can't enjoy life to the fullest and also be perfectly protected. And speaking of protection, um, ISDN has Aerophotona sunscreens that are very special. They are unique in that they not only help protect, but they also repair existing sun damage. So Aerophotona actinica and Aerophotona ageless are 100% mineral, SPF 50. And what I was saying about repairing sun damage is actually our proprietary technology called DNA repair zones. DNA repair zones is an encapsulated photolyzed enzyme that helps repair DNA mutations caused by the sun. So photolyze is actually present in plant, in certain plants and animals, but it's not present in humans. And in 2015, the chemistry Nobel prize was awarded to the group 
that were able to prove that photolyase, when used in humans topically, was able to repair these DNA mutations caused by the sun. So again, Nobel Prize winning discovery of photolyase using that mechanism from plants and animals being able to transfer it for human use. Um, and what it does is, is it helps you repair existing sun damage. Um, so basically the diagram that you're seeing here in the bottom, um, what it's telling you is, you know, this is the, the DNA chain as we were seeing earlier when I was explaining kind of that UV radiation hitting the keratinocyte and that DNA breakage that was occurring, right? So the light hits um, the DNA chain, um, it causes a CPD lesion, that then um, the photolyase, when it's applied and it, it's triggered with visible light, it binds to the lesion and helps revert it to the DNA without that lesion, okay? So it's kind of like a mechanism and it's really interesting because the photolysis is actually activated through visible light, which means that if you're using your sunscreen during the day, it's helping you do that repairing action as you're using it and as you're going onto the street. And like I always say, you know, when you find out that, hey, there's actually a sunscreen that repairs, um, that repairs existing sun damage and it has a Nobel Prize winning technology and it's 100% mineral, you know, you could even be willing to say, hey, okay, I'll use it even if, you know, the texture is, is, is a bit like cement. But no, actually the beauty of Isden Aerophotona sunscreens is that despite being mineral and having this wonderful technology, the texture is absolutely ultralight. Uh, what I'm showing here on my hand is Aerophotona Ageless. It is our tinted variant. Um, it also has some anti-aging actives and it's super universal tint. It goes really well across all Fitzpatrick types. It is a silky texture, no greasy finish whatsoever. And despite being 100% mineral, the texture is just absolutely spectacular. It blends in perfectly. Um, and again, it's got great technology. So what I always say uh, is, you know, if you're going to use a sunscreen, you know, love your skin with sunscreens that do more because you could be getting a sunscreen that's not only protecting, but it's also repairing your sun damage. Okay, so again, um, you've got Aerophotona actinica and Aerophotona ageless. Aerophotona actinica is our classic version. This one does not have a tint. It's the orange one that you see here on the right. Um, and it's designed predominantly for actinic damage. So people that have actinic keratosis, we have a lot of clinical studies that show that it helps stop the progression and actually revert some of those lesions. Um, so beloved by dermatologists all around the US. Um, because it really is a rock star product. And again, consumers and people like us do not need to compromise on texture, uh, which is wonderful. And the Aerophotona Ageless, which is the one on the left, is the one that's tinted. Again, really a universal tint, blends in, goes in super well. Neither of them leave a white cast, um, and they both also have vitamin E. So they're ultra hydrating, ultra light, silky, um, and just overall wonderful. Uh, so I hope that if you don't haven't already tried it, that you do after this um, master class. All right, I think it's time for another poll, Chrissy. It sure is. We will get it up on the screen here so everyone can take it. Uh, which hyperpigmentation concern do you have? This is, I think this might be a single choice, uh, single mm -hmm. choice one, but um, let's see. Do you uh, have melasma, sunspots, freckles? post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or treatment-related discoloration or all of the above? I hope not all of the above. <laughs> I don't have all the above, but I have more than one. So I think I'm going to click all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get the results here in just a minute. Okay, 16% of our poll participants have concerns about melasma, 59% say sunspots, 3% say freckles, 11% post-inflammatory, no treatment-related discoloration, and 11% all of the above. Probably a couple of people that chose that one because they didn't want to be boxed into just one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Okay, so we do see that the majority uh, of people are around sunspots, which is, um, as I was saying, obviously, we we all wish we could reach out to our younger selves and say, just do that extra step, just wear sunscreen, you know, you're looking fabulous, you're, before you walk out the door, just put some sunscreen on, you're 
30, 40, 50, 60, 70 year old self will thank you. Um, but again, there's a lot of things that you can do to uh, get rid of those pesky sunspots. So uh, let's go in and cover a few of them. So here I want to just quickly touch upon the four stages of the melanogenesis. And the melanogenesis, so many big words in this presentation. The melanogenesis is the process by which the um by the by which melanin is produced in the melanosomes by melanocytes. So again, the cell is the melanocyte. The melanosomes were those little black um, dots that we saw in the cell. The melanin is the pigment that's inside it, okay? And the melanogenesis is the process by which that pigment is generated, okay? Um, so again, it's all starting, or at least in this case, I'm focusing on the UV-derived um, melanogenesis. So You've got your UV radiation, which induces the process. It creates the process. So again, it kind of goes into the keratinocyte. When the body understands that the DNA is exposed, it then triggers that protein that signals to the melanocyte, hey, send me some melanin so I can protect uh, the nucleus of my cell. That is uh, what activates kind of a tyrosinase. Uh, uh, it activates uh, the tyrosinase enzyme. Um, which is an enzyme that's responsible in this process. Just so you know, when you don't have this tyrosinase uh, or you have a deficiency, that's what produces albinism. So you can really see that this enzyme is really core in the color or the tone or the pigmentation of your skin because it can go either way, right? So when it's triggered through the melanogenesis, it can lead to a darkening of the skin tone through this melanin production. But when it's absent, it produces albinism, right? Um, and then the third step, as you know, the melanosome transfers um, the pigment to the keratinocytes. And then when the, that melanin is accumulated in the keratinocytes, you have that appearance of dark spots or darkening of the skin. Okay. So these are kind of like the four phases of the, uh, the four stages of the melanogenesis. Um, and so what, you know, as, as brands in the skincare space, we always try to innovate and research what is the best way to address the different stages with different ingredients so that we're providing a really holistic um, approach to either preventing or repairing or interfering in this process of melanogenesis so that we don't have that accumulation of melanin in the keratinocytes, uh, which is what's giving you kind of that outwards appearance of either the sunspots or the melasma or the um, suntan, okay? So um, there are very common um, skin tone correcting agents. You could look at things like hydroquinone, arbutin, ascorbic acid, which is just another way uh, to call vitamin C. And what most depigmenting agents do is they inhibit the tyrosinase um, enzyme, which as I was explaining earlier, is what kind of kickstarts that melanin synthesis. It's very interesting because this tyrosinase enzyme is also what produces that browning on damaged fruit um, or plant tissues. So it's really interesting to see how like across plants and humans that tyrosinase enzyme really leads to that darkening of the cells, right? Um, and that accumulation of pigment that outwardly is perceived as a darkening um, of, of the skin or of the leaf or of the fruit. Um, Obviously, all of these depigmenting actives, they're all very thoroughly researched, but oftentimes consumers can have a concern on safety or tolerability. Um, you know, sometimes you're advised to not use depigmenting um, products when you're breastfeeding or things like that, right? So, you know, it's always important in the industry that we keep raising the bar and we keep um, doing more and more research so that these ingredients um, are used in the most responsible and safe way, uh, yielding the best results, right? So again, going back to that is in duality, it's not just about the efficacy, it's also about the safety. Um, and then I want to highlight just some other common um, OTC ingredients that you may have heard of in the past. So you've got, for example, niacinamide, another way to call it is vitamin B3. Um, and this one is really, um, really popular in the uh, treatment of hyperpigmentation and to even skin tone. 
Um, as I was mentioning earlier, hydroquinone, uh, it lightens the epidermal pigmentation. So again, ep the epidermal is that uppermost layer. By reducing the production of new melanin, how does it do this? It inhibits the tyrosinase enzyme, which as you remember, was kind of that first step after the kickoff of the melanogenesis um, phase. Arbutin act, acts in a very similar way. Um, it helps decrease uh, melanin levels. If you've got a vitamin C, as I was saying at the beginning when we were talking about ways to prevent, uh, the vitamin C interacts with the copper um, at tyrosinase active sites, and it also helps inhibit the action of the enzyme. Then you've got other types of ingredients, like for example, tranexamic acid, which is a synthetic amino acid derived from lysine that helps fight dark spots, especially caused by the sun. So it's very interesting that 59% of you said that you were concerned with um, sunspots. Tranexamic acid is specifically helping to fight those um, sunspots. And it's the main ingredient in Meliclear Advance, which is the depigmenting serum that I was talking to you at the beginning of the presentation and which I'm gonna talk about a little bit now. Um, other uh, products like retinoids, they're also super helpful in reducing the appearance of um, dark pigmentation because they help speed up the natural skin cell turnover. And so as you know, kind of your skin is brick and mortar, you've got that upper cell, which kind of flakes off and gives rise to the newest um, cells. So when you have that skin cell turnover that's accelerated, it can help remove some of those keratinocytes on the surface that um, are, are driving that um, outward appearance of pigmentation and skin darkening, right? Um, and we have a fantastic product for this called Retinol Advance, which just launched last month. Uh, so it's a very, very new product. If you're into retinoids, I really suggest you try it. I'll also cover it a little bit more later. And then another final suggestion for um, ingredients to help combat hyperpigmentation are AHAs or alpha hydroxy acids. So again, similar to retinoids that, you know, help the speed up the natural skin cell turnover, any product that has an AHA or peels, they'll also help with that skin renewal um, in order to give rise to those newer cells um, that don't have that accumulation of melanin. Okay. So you know, as you all were saying, you're all 100% of you are here because you are struggling with hyperpigmentation. And actually, four out of 10 women, we did a survey, uh, four out of 10 women continue to have recurrent sunspots despite using depigmenting products. And obviously, this makes us all feel very frustrated and discouraged. So, you know, oftentimes we find that there are some barriers with depigmenting products. Some people feel that they might be kind of sticky. Other people complain about the smell. Other people say, ah, it doesn't really play well with the rest of my routine. And oftentimes compliance is one of the reasons why treatments fail, right? So um, at ISDEN, we wanted to create what we believe to be, you know, a very complete, suitable for everyone depigmenting serum. And we launched Meliclear Advanced. Uh, we call it our little fade and forget miracle. So you want to fade discoloration and recapture radiance. It is our pigment perfecting serum that reduces dark spots for even luminous skin. I have it right here. So this is the box. Um, and this is a 1.7 fluid ounce 50 ml bottle. Okay. We have clinical studies that demonstrate... Um, that you're gonna see a reduction in wrinkles and I'll show you some before and after later um, in, in 12 weeks. And so this bottle, we made it this size so that you could see results with just one bottle, okay? So it is a bit of a larger one than you might um, have in your vanity, <laughs> but uh, we wanted to make sure that anybody that wanted to give ISDIN Meliclear Advanced a go, if you, are, if you are consistent with your treatment and you use it morning and night, I'll get into that a little bit later, you'll see results after one bottle, okay? So some of the things that we did to address kind of those common barriers um, uh, towards compliance, uh, one is the texture is super water gel serum. So, so it is not sticky at all. And I really wish that everybody kind of had a sample at home so you could be trying this at the same time that I'm trying it. But the formula is not sticky at all. The fragrance, it's not overpowering. It's very pleasant. You really have 
you know, a texture that is going to play well. If you want to add extra moisturization to your skin, you can put a cream on top of it. Um, you could use it as a standalone because it is quite um, hydrating as well. And the good thing is that it's um, suitable for all skin types. And it's actually been tested to um, be uh, suitable even for sensitive skin. Um, so really, if you're struggling with sunspots, Melaclear Advance, one bottle, you know, we've got the clinical data to show it. Uh, really give it a try. I'm going to go a little bit more into the ingredients. Um, but I just wanted you to see, you know, the texture. I'll try to do it up close. It's a water gel and it's really light. Really, really light. Okay. Um, so a little bit on the Melaclear Advance. So again, as I said, it's a spot correcting gel serum. It's going to help to reduce pronounced dark spot, dark spots and overall give you a more um, radiant and homogeneous complexion. And it's got a unique blend of ingredients, the main one being tranexamic acid, which is that one that we saw um, that was particularly helpful in treating sunspots. It also has niacinamide, uh, which is kind of one of the top ones in the category for this. And it has spot corrector complex, which also is going to help with that um, second stage of the melanogenesis and inhibiting that enzyme. You are going to see improvements in as early as two weeks with progressively dramatic results at 12 weeks. And the wonderful thing that we saw in the clinical studies is that it also gives you sustained results. So even after you've stopped the treatment, we've shown that even 30 days later, you're still getting um, those um, depigmenting benefits um, even after the treatment has stopped. So again, suitable for all skin types, including sensitive skin. Um, and the ideal user for Melaclear Advance is really anybody who's starting to see those sunspots, you know, creep in or anybody that maybe potentially had a baby recently and is dealing with cloasma, um, you know, over 30 years old with visible hyperpigmentation. Melaclear Advanced is for um, intense spot correction. Okay, so at ISDIN, we have two products for that are for depigmenting. One is Melaclear, and this one is Melaclear Advanced. Melaclear is for kind of more light to moderate pigmentation. This one is for people who have more cumulative um, pigmentation, dark spots, really those that you think that you might not be able to get out. It really is more of an intense treatment. Uh, for people that are looking to even their skin tone. And it and it goes really, really well as a combination of like an in-office treatment, as I was saying earlier, um, combined with this topical product, but it can also work standalone um, as a cosmetic treatment. So again, tranexamic acid with the synthetic amino acid that helps interfere uh, with the interaction of melanocytes and keratinocytes so this tranexamic acid is trying to prevent those dendrites from delivering the pigment. If you remember in that little cell uh, diagram that we had, it's trying to interfere with that interaction between the melanocyte dendrite going and delivering those um, melanin pigments to the keratinocytes. It also has niacinamide, so it targets unwanted pigmentation. It doesn't inhibit the production of melanin, but it inhibits the transfers uh, of the melanosome. So again, a very complementary action with tranexamic acid, and it's proven to um, inhibit the transfer by up to 68%. Then we've got our spot corrector complex, which is our blend of exfoliating acids. Remember when I was talking earlier about the AHAs um, or how retinoids, for example, through the sk uh, skin renewal um, help treat that discoloration. Uh, so spot corrector complex. And then we also have licorice root extract, which is also going to help with skin flexibility and a little bit of that hydration that I was mentioning, that if you wanted to use it at night as a standalone, um, you can. But we have a wonderful nighttime routine that I want to present to you later as well. And the really unique thing about Melaclear Advance is it's going to work in all four stages that we saw. So from the melanogenesis induction triggered by the UV radiation, to the activation of the tyrosinase enzyme, to then that transfer of the melanosomes to the keratinocytes of that pigment uh, through the melanosomes and the accumulation of melanin in the keratinocytes, which is what that um, dark spot appearance um, is what we see from the outside. So again, you can see kind of the ingredients that I was mentioning in the previous slide, how they work in the different stages. So it's a really robust 
um, and comprehensive formulation to treat all four stages. So you're gonna get fantastic results. Now I wanna show you the before and after. Um, so this is day zero on the left, day 14 in the middle, and day 84 on the right. So day 84, just take it as your 12 weeks of results. Day 14 is your two weeks. Uh, you can see for yourself, you can see up here in the forehead, how that discoloration fades, you know, here on the sides, by the mouth, just fantastic results. Um, and we have plenty of examples uh, like these. So, you know, when we say you have visible results at 14 days, you're gonna see it. Um, and I think that's gonna really give you that boost to stick with the treatment, stick with it for 12 weeks. If you want to get those, you know, dramatically visible results, stick with the product, finish it, you know, I'll, I'll let you off the hook when you finish the bottle. That's, that's all I'll say. <laughs> but I think by that time, you're going to be very, very pleased. Super important. Even if you're using Melaclear Advanced, you absolutely have to use a sunscreen every single day. Otherwise, you will be driving your skin crazy. Uh, trying to undo every single day the damage from the day, which could have been prevented, and we're going to get nowhere, okay? So again, please remember, during the day, you want to top off your routine with the ISDEN Aerophotona. You can go classic in the Aerophotona Actinica or tinted with the Aerophotona Ageless, and then you've got your Melaclear Advance, okay? Uh, we did some subjective questionnaires with consumers after 14 days, 91% of consumers said they saw a more homogeneous skin tone. 100% of the subjects liked the texture and how easily it spreads on skin. So when I was talking earlier about the barriers of a lot of people not committing to their treatments because they're very sticky, uh, I think the, the R&D team really, really nailed the texture on this product. The gel serum, it's liked by 100% of the subjects. And then after 28 days, 94, 94% uh, 94 of the consumers would buy the product. 84% saw a brighter skin complexion and 81% saw a reduction in the number and size of dark spots. Um, so again, uh, just wanna leave you with, you know, it's recommended to be used morning and night. If you need a moisturizer afterwards, feel free. Don't forget to use a sunscreen every morning. Um, and yeah, if you use it morning and night as indicated, the bottle will last you for the 12 weeks that you need to get your dramatically visible results. Now, I was mentioning earlier that it can kind of be used as a standalone, but really you want to focus on a full routine. Um, so ISDIN is providing you this routine, uh, which covers all five steps that you want to have in kind of your morning skincare, starting with cleansing. So we have our essential cleansing, which is a Mediterranean olive oil based cleanser. It's made with 85% uh, natural ingredients and it's an awesome oil to milk texture. So you apply it on your face um, as an oil with dry hands, dry face. And then after you've blended it into your skin and you've really gone through your eyes, removing any makeup, removing any sun care that you've had on through the day, you then um, moisten your hands, put a little bit of water, and then you rinse it off. Um, wonderful texture. You then want to go with your KOX eyes. So again, if you're concerned about pigmentation, KOX eyes is our eye contour for dark circles um, and um, bags, uh, bags and dark circles. So again, pigmentation underneath the eyes that you're not going to put Melaclear Advanced on. You want um, a vitamin K oxide eye contour, such as um, K oxide. Then of course, your step after the eye contour cream is your serum. You've got your Melaclear Advanced there. And then up at the top on that second uh, big uh, layer is uh, the Age Contour Cream. So this is an anti-glycation cream for face and neck um, that pairs very, very well with all of our ISDIN serums. And finally, you want to top off your routine in the morning with Aerophotona Ageless or Aerophotona Actinica if you're not interested in the tint. This is what ISDIN proposes as the ideal morning routine to tackle pigmentation and ensure that you're preventing any further UV related damage on your skin. Okay. And as I said, just one more slide, retinol advanced. It is our latest launch. As I said, retinoids are also a great way to combat hyperpigmentation. 
We just launched this product a month ago. As you can see, it is a dual phased uh, serum. And what's special about it is that historically the retinoid category has been very retinol focused and retinol driven. This is formulated with retinaldehyde, which is one step closer from an activity level to tretinoin, which is the prescription form of retinoids, right? So it's one step closer. It requires one less conversion. Um, and it's going to give you really powerful results. Clinically demonstrated 43% wrinkles in four weeks, 43% less wrinkles in four weeks. Again, excellent skin tolerance tested on all skin types. And here, let me see if you see it. There is a valve. There's two concentric circles. And what it does is it keeps the oily phase separated from the aqueous phase so that the active ingredients, this is the gold part in the bottom where the retinaldehyde goes, that's kept stable and protected from the rest of the ingredients so that you're getting the maximum potency through to the last drop of your product. So let me just show you as well the texture here. They both come out at the same time and you mix it. Again, not sticky at all. Super, super um, just wonderful smell, um, but not overpowering at all uh, for those of you that may be concerned with um, perfume. Um, and yeah, this product, uh, we, we actually launched it in Spain um, a little while back. Within three months of launching, it became the number one SKU in pharmacies in Spain. Not for Misden, the number one SKU in general in the pharmacy and skincare category number one product. It is um, a powerhouse. And just this week, it won the Marie Claire Game Changers Beauty Award. So super excited for all of you to try Retinol Advanced as well as Melaclear Advanced. They're also complimentary. If you do want to try both, you would want to use Melaclear Advanced in the mornings and Retinol Advanced at night. And that is all I have for you all today. Um, thank you so much for being here with us. I think we can open it up to some questions, Chrissy. Yeah, we have a few questions. Let's see here. And we have some coming in like as I speak as well. So mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to, I'm going to start with a couple that I've, that we captured before the, the actual masterclass. And then a couple that came in really just in the last few minutes. Um, Margaret asked just recently, if you can use Melaclear Advanced on your hands. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Those sunspots, sometimes we forget to protect our hands. So it's a very, very good use, actually. Um, let's see here. And does Melaclear Advanced help with redness as well? Does Melaclear Advanced help with redness? It is yeah. not specifically designed for redness, no. Okay. Let's see here. Um, okay, so we had a few questions actually about um, what to use with Melaclear Advanced. What products or actives work best for daytime under sunscreen, right? So mm -hmm. I think you kind of answered that, that you can use the Melaclear Advanced during the day. Can you use it at night with the retinol or a tretinoin? So it's best if you let your skin focus on what it's doing, right? So if you have, um, if you want to be using a retinoid because of the skill, skin cell turnover benefits that you're getting, and you also want to focus on the depigmenting, I would say just leave them separate, have your um, Melaclear Advanced in the morning and use your retinoid at night. In the end, you're gonna have a very powerful retinaldehyde acting. You have your tranexamic acid in the Melaclear Advanced. Just keep them separate. You know, don't give your don't give your skin so much to do. Just let it focus on one thing at a time. Um, and that'll always be better as well. It'll also avoid any kind of sensitivity or things like that. Would you recommend any modifications to the routine that you gave for someone who has sensitive skin or um, maybe a rosacea uh, prone skin? Yeah. So again, um, Melaclear Advanced has been tested on all skin types and it's, it's, you know, suitable even for sensitive skin. So there's no reason why you would modify that, um, routine for, for that. Um, I would say also very important if you've got sensitive skin, you don't want any kind of UV, um, induced sensitivity. So really double down on the sunscreen 
Um, and no, I was thinking of the cleanser, but even the essential cleanser, because it's oil-based, it's very, very gentle. So it can be used by all skin types as well. Let's see here. Somebody just asked, can she repeat, can Laura repeat what she said if you're going to use retinol advanced and uh, Melaclear advanced in terms of steps? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So if you're going to be using Melaclear Advance and Retinol Advance, and I love this question because it means you know you got to use both, right? So fantastic question. <laughs> um, actually, I'll just pull up that um, slide again. I think it'll just be easier for everyone. So can you see the slide? Yes. Yep. Perfect. Yes. So if you're going to be using both, um, you want to use essential cleansing always morning and night. So cleansing is always the first step in your routine. It's going to give you a fantastic base for your skin to be breathing and be able to properly absorb all of the ingredients that are going on after. If you're in the morning and you have concerns around dark circles and bags, you want to use Kaox Eyes. At night, if your concern is more around wrinkles, ISDEN has a nighttime eye contour cream called Vital Eyes. And we can link to this maybe later, Chrissy, when we send the recap. So it's called a Vital Eyes and it's got melatonin and caffeine and it's going to help with all of your wrinkles um, and crow's feet. Okay. So kind of the morning is the Kaox Eyes. The nighttime is the Vital Eyes. Now, if you've got in the morning your Melaclear Advance, that's your third step. You can use retinol advance at night in that same order, cleanser, eye contour, and then your retinol advanced. And then you move on to your cream, which is always the last step. So in the case of the morning, you've got your age contour, which again is for face and neck and décolletage. And at night, you have the equivalent age contour night, which also has melatonin. Now I've mentioned melatonin twice. Let me just say a little bl blurb. Melatonin, as you guys know, is a hormone that's produced in the pineal gl gland. And the production, uh, it, it's what regulates our circadian rhythm, the production declines dramatically with age. And so what ISDEN has shown through numerous clinical studies is that melatonin can help act as an indirect antioxidant and stimulate kind of that response to external aggressors and keep your skin rejuvenated and combat all of those effects of aging. So melatonin is kind of like a red thread ingredient through all of, all of our nighttime ingredients. Retinol Advance actually also contains melatonin. So Vitalize contains melatonin, which is the eye contour. The Serum Step also contains melatonin in both Melatonic, if you're familiar, and Retinol Advanced. And then your cream is Age Contour Night, which again, for face and neck, with the added melatonin benefits. And then at night, you wouldn't need to use a sunscreen. Um, Margaret had a question for around the eye area. Um, can, can any of the, uh, ISDEN eye products be used for surgical scars under the eyes? I think it's best you consult with your dermatologist. So if you've got surgical scars, you know, take your product to your dermatologist and get their say, they're going to know what kind of procedure went on. And I think it's always your best bet. Yeah. Um, and let's see here. Can you, I wonder if you could um, just go over the differences between the the two eye creams again, because we did have a question asking about like, what's best for like dryness and wrinkles around the eyes versus dark circles and puffiness. So it all kind of falls together for you there. <laughs> Absolutely. Give me 30 seconds. I'm going to pull up a visual so you all can see. Um, this is like, it's like I prepared for it. 30 seconds. Here we go. Okay. So we see it on the screen. Yes. Refreshed, rested, yep. rejuvenated. Okay. On the left, you've got Kaox Eyes. And on the right, you have Vital Eyes. They both have ceramic applicators. So here at the tip of the um, Kaox Eyes, that's going to provide like a hydro, like a micro cooling effect. Um, and it's going to also help massage and stimulate, stimulate microcirculation. But the Vitalize, even though it's not in a tube, it also has this applicator, which is ceramic, and it has a cold effect. So they're both wonderful for kind of like depuffing. But if you want to focus on core differences, Kaox Eyes can be used morning and night, okay? But we're just saying that if you have all of these concerns, you want to go Kaox Eyes in the morning and Vitalize at night. Kaox Eyes is for dark circles, bags, and puffiness. So if your concern is you wake up in the morning, your eyes feel bloated in the bottom, or you've got those dark circles, um, 
K oxide is what you want because it's got um, vitamin K oxide, which is going to help combat that pigmentation under the eyes. It's got haloxyl. It's got a bunch of ingredients that are going to be wonderful for reducing that puffiness. Okay. So if, if you've got either puffiness, you know, bags or dark circles, you go to K oxide. If your concern is around crow's feet, fine lines, wrinkles, dehydration around the eye area, your go-to is vitalize. Okay. So yes, one is kind of morning and night. You could use both of them kind of morning and night, but really you want to select your eye contour based on your concern. Fine lines and wrinkles around the eye area, vitalize, dark circles, bags and puffiness, K oxide. Awesome. Well, Laura, this has been great. Such a wealth of information. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, for sure. Before we close, I do just want to let everyone know that if you have any additional questions about the ISDIN brand, we have an amazing customer care team at Lovely Skin who has been trained by Laura in person, actually just maybe a few weeks ago. It was really ago, Yeah, it was, I, I got the chance to visit the team. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they're very well versed and they can help you. You can reach out to them at customer care at lovelyskin.com. Um, Laura, again, I just want to thank you so much for spending the evening with us and My pleasure. taking the time to, to uh, create such a fantastic presentation for everybody to learn from. Thank you. I hope everybody got what they needed out of this with 100% concerns around hyperpigmentation. I hope it was worthwhile for everyone. Thank you, Chrissy, for having me. And thank you to our wonderful moderators who were answering questions throughout the yes. presentation. Very we hard. Appreciate, <laughs> appreciate you and love you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Bye.